Hey there, it's Joseph from RoboFlow. Today, I'm going to be answering a core question that we get all the time at RoboFlow. That question is, is Grayscale a pre-processing step or an augmentation step in computer vision? Now, this is a great question to answer and a great time to answer it because at RoboFlow, we recently introduced the ability to have Grayscale as either a pre-processing or an augmentation step. So RoboFlow has long had the ability to add Grayscale as a pre-processing step, and we recently introduced the ability for Grayscale to be an augmentation step. Does that mean that we introduced the same thing twice? What's the difference here? What's going on? The reason I really like this question is because it gets to the core of the difference between pre-processing and augmentation. So here in RoboFlow, the demo that I'm going to walk through is in the context of our chess pieces data set. So this is a data set of chess pieces that were captured from a common perspective, and each of the individual pieces are labeled, uh, and they also include like white or black, for example. Uh, you can get this data set as well for free on public.roboflow.com and fork it in the upper right hand corner to your own account. Okay, now with this data set, um, you'll notice that I can add pre-processing step and one of those pre-processing steps is in fact grayscale. Or I can add augmentation steps and one of those augmentation steps is also grayscale. So what's the deal here? Okay, for starters, pre-processing steps are steps that you apply to your entire data set meaning your training set, your validation set, and your testing set. Pre-processing steps are the ones that are going to also need to be in your production model pipeline. In some senses, you could think about pre-processing as almost like the data cleaning required for images to be high quality, for your model to view and see them. On the other hand, augmentation are steps that you apply to your training data to increase the variance in that training data so that the model learns from a wide array of different examples. Okay, so let's put this into context, okay? So let's say if we use Grayscale as a pre-processing step, okay? If we use Grayscale as a pre-processing step, that means all of our images are going to become Grayscale. Uh, that means no color channels are going to be fed to our model at all. Why might we want to do this? Well, in the blog post that I've written, it kind of walks through a couple of reasons, which I'm happy to link both in the description and talk through with you. When you grayscale an image, you're implicitly saying that color is not a meaningful signal to have my model understand and interpret objects in a given image. And this could be true, right? Like in our chess pieces data set, you might argue that actually you don't need to know color. I mean, the chess pieces are actually black and white, which are already high contrast differences. We could grayscale the rest of the image and perhaps the model would still perform just as well, if not better on just the grayscale data. Now, it's not just a model performance in terms of accuracy consideration. In fact, when you grayscale an image, you actually can make that image be a smaller amount of data and the model that it takes to process that image also be smaller. And if that means the image can be smaller and the model can be smaller, that means you could get a faster performing model. How do grayscale images allow a model to work faster? Well, it all comes down to how color is stored in images. So as you see on my screen here, the um, RGB, red, green, and blue, color channels that we typically see, like in this YouTube video, um, are all stored independently. And when a model does convolutions across each of those color channels, well, it must take each of them into consideration. So you see here, it takes the red convolution, the green convolution, and the blue convolution, and then sums these up and puts it into an output network, or an output matrix. Now, if we only had one color channel, if we only had a single color channel, they would only have to do this convolution once, right? And that would be faster uh, because it doesn't have to consider all those other different color channels. Um, so besides both wanting our model to not learn about color or saying that color is not an important feature and potentially speed improvements, those are some of the reasons that we might want pre-processing um, or grayscale pre-processing. On the other hand, pre-process or grayscale 
as an augmentation step is us actually only affecting our training data and modifying some, not all, of the images in the training data set to be grayscale. So you'll notice, if I select in RoboFlow grayscale as an augmentation step, I also have this slider. And this slider is going to dictate what percent of my images randomly become grayscale, right? So if I set it to 20, then roughly 20% of my images in the training data set will become grayscaled images. Why might we want to do this? Well, as we mentioned, potentially you have data where you want the model to learn about uh, different colors of the input objects. Um, meaning that, let's say you're training a model to recognize school buses. School buses are often yellow, but I've actually seen some school buses that are blue. Um, or sometimes maybe like party buses, for example, can be repainted to all sorts of different zany colors, uh, if you've seen such a thing. So maybe we don't have enough of those examples in our data set, and maybe our model is going to overfit on only believing school buses are yellow. So we want our model to generalize to the shape and other attributes about the object, about a school bus, that are not only color. So randomly having some of our images be non-yellow school buses, we can affect that change. Um, I've written more about that in the uh, Introducing Grayscale and uh, Hue Augmentations blog post, which I'll also link below. Okay, so in summary, pre-processing steps are those that apply to our entire data set and must be a part of our training uh, or, or our inference pipeline, right? Not just training, but training, valid, and test, meaning when you go to production, when you use your model on your security camera, on your drone, on your agricultural image, on your microscopic image, you must grayscale the image for the model to learn about it. Whereas grayscale as an augmentation step randomly applies to only some of our images, and that randomization allows our model to generalize better to different colors. So I've wrapped this all up in a single slide of pre-processing versus augmentation, okay? So the big idea here is pre-processing is like cleaning data, and it applies to all images in training and inference, whereas augmentation is like boosting a sample of our data, and that sample happens to be the training set. Um, that applies to all of our training images uh, randomly, um, it increases both the potential size of our data set and improves model fit and potentially reduces overfitting. So at its core, a step, a, a given image manipulation, whether it's grayscale, whether it's a hue change, et cetera, um, isn't necessarily automatically pre-processing or augmentation. It depends on how you're using it and if it makes sense for your given data set. I hope you learned something. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the RoboFlow YouTube to be updated on other best practices in computer vision. Thanks.